Order! Questions to the Prime Minister! Closed question of Mr Michael Fabrican. Question number one, sir. The Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The economy in the West Midlands is performing well. Businesses are continuing to invest, and since 2010, employment in the West Midlands has risen by 180,000. That is because Conservatives in government have safeguarded the economy, and as a result, my, right, my honourable friend asked about public services, as a result there are more doctors and more nurses in his hospitals, because you can only have strong public services when you have the strong and stable leadership that delivers a strong economy. Cool. <laughs> Roger, club president for Top Toastmasters. Let's welcome a big hand for Roger. Thank you, Tim. Welcome, everybody, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. I'd like to take a first an opportunity to, before I go around and, and welcome all our guests individually, uh, to welcome two of our dignitaries, uh, Balil Hussein is our Area 4 Director, so please welcome him. And sitting right next to him is the A5 Area Director and our newest member of TOP, to have our dignitaries here. So I'd like to take just a moment to welcome our guests and go around the room real quickly and just have you say your name and what club you're from. So we'll start over on this end. Hi, my name is Sid Chowry. I'm a part of Next Step Toastmasters and I've been a Toastmaster for about a year and a half. Welcome. My name is Joanne Calais and I'm a new Toastmaster for TOP, T-O-P. I love it here. And I'm glad, I'm glad to see lots of new faces. Great. I'm Joe Davis with the Career Communicators in Palatine. And I've been with those for about a year and a half as well. Uh, my name is Michelle. Uh, I'm uh, the, uh, in XL Toastmaster. I'm the Area uh, 6 Director. So I'm oh. glad to hear from you. Okay. And Paul? Okay. Paul Cossell. I guess you would say I'm the assistant to the Area 3 director, and who's Arlene Clausell, and we had another meeting tonight. Okay. Welcome. And our man behind the camera. I'm Paul Racino. I'm a member of Cary Grove Toastmasters. I've been a Toastmaster for about 14 years. <coughs> Well, we are 
absolutely delighted to have so many guests tonight, and you are in for a real treat because this is going to be an amazing meeting. As you know, contest season is upon us, and many clubs are trying to figure out exactly how to make their contests great. And we have two excellent presenters tonight that are going to help you do just that. You're also going to get to hear, as part of our top club, some excellent speakers and our unique evaluation process you will be able to see firsthand for those of you who have who have not been here before. So without further delay, I'd like to introduce our postmaster of the evening, Miss Kimberly Barrett. Welcome everybody, welcome guests. Thank you for coming, guest speaker, and uh, all of our members. It's wonderful to see everyone tonight. As Roger said, we're getting excited about our next meeting because we're having our humorous speech contest as well as our evaluation contest next week. Tonight, Jerry Evans and Tim Bolger are going to give us an educational session for the first 45 minutes about how to have a kick butt keys, uh, speech contest, right? Yes. Yeah. Wants to do it really, really well. So that'll be wonderful for me because I'm the chair of the contest for this club and I'm new to uh, Toastmasters and new to this club. So I'll be paying attention tonight. Hopefully everyone will help me in the room. <laughs> what I'd like to do is introduce our speakers here. It's speech contest time. Speech contests are an integral part of Toastmasters and how we conduct them is critically important for participants to grow their speaking skills. In this interactive educational session, you will learn what it takes to plan ahead, prepare and conduct a high quality contest at this club, area level, and vision levels. You will experience via video examples of poor and good quality contests. You will learn keys to a successful contest, plan ahead for success, how to create fair and impartial judging, 2017 contest rules, and the most misunderstood rules. You will walk away today with a plan and strategy to ensure a successful high quality club area or division contest. This session will be conducted by distinguished Toastmaster Jerry Evans and videographer extraordinaire Tim Bolger. <laughs> How to plan and conduct a kick butt quality contest. Please help me welcome Jerry and Tim. you all here this evening? Did you just come for the food and the refreshments? Did you come to get out of the rain? Yeah. Or did you show up this evening to figure out how to plan and conduct a kick butt, high quality club contest, area contest, or division contest? Yes and yes? Yes. 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 Good. You're in the right place because this is going to be a fast paced session. It's going to be interactive. Tim and I are not going to play the sage from the stage because it's all about you, it's not about us. And we want to give you as much value as we possibly can in the next 45 minutes. So when Kim introduced us and she went through the list of different things that we're going to talk about this evening, we're really going to share some information with you because I know a lot of us in this room who've competed in contests, have run their own club contests. We've seen kind of the good, the bad, and the really not so good <laughs> contest. How, how many of you, just a quick survey, how many of you have been contest chairs before? Excellent, okay. How many of you have actually been contestants in a contest before? All right. All right. For those of you that have not been a contestant, here's a short tagline for you regarding contests. Contests will test you, they will challenge you, they will change you. If you learn the lesson and grow from the experience, guess what? you can keep the change. <laughs> it's an opportunity for you to grow on. Because the primary purpose of any contest, regardless of what contest it is, we'll get into specific contests, it's really to grow and learn from the experience and to challenge yourself to become a better version of you. 
It's not about me competing with Michelle. It's not about me competing with Joe or Vipa or Val or anyone else in the room. It's challenging yourself to deliver the best version, speech, humorous speech, table topics, evaluation, or whatever it is. Because when you learn and you grow from that experience, then you're not getting caught up in your head worrying about someone else and their speech. Because a lot of times, and Sid is going to talk a little bit later on, is that they get caught up in worrying about what somebody else is doing in terms of their speech, and then they kind of lose sight of their own speech. Does that make sense? Because we get all this feedback, it's coming at us from all different directions. So tonight, let's get into talking about how do you conduct, how do you plan a quality speech contest. And Tim is going to be showing some videos we're going to, to illustrate the point, so you'll see live video that he's recorded. Tim has probably recorded, just to put it in context for those of you who don't really know Tim, over the past, what, eight years? Yes. We have, what now, 600 hours of video? Maybe it's closer to 700 now. We're one of the few districts that have that much video online that serves as a resource and a tool for all of you, whether or not you're doing it in a club contest, area division contest, or even the district that Tim has so graciously and generously donated his time, his resources, to make that available to us. So let's get into this. So here's what we're going to cover this evening. We're going to talk about the speech contest benefits, the role of the area and also division governors and how they play into the contest cycle. We're going to talk about contest speech preparation. I'm going to, I'm going to emphasize this quite a bit because it's just like preparing for a speech. Before we even get into thinking about a contest, we need to properly plan and how we're going to conduct that contest. No different than if we're getting ready to plan and prepare to deliver a speech. And last, we're going to talk a little bit about speech contest rules. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but toward the end of the presentation, we'll cover some parts of that. So let's talk about speech contest benefits. Shout it out. What's some of the benefits of participating in a speech contest? Anyone? Stretch yourself. Um, become better at speaking. OK, excellent. Get out of your comfort Soon. zone. Get out of your comfort zone. Come on, shout it out. I know you all know some more reasons. Yeah. Challenge yourself. Challenges, exactly. How about the other sport? The element of competing against something that you may not have done since high school. That's always a benefit, too. <laughs> the audience. What about the audience? Do we show up just for us, or are we really showing up for the audience? Right? It's not about us, it's about the audience. Yeah? Well, especially, you know, when you get up to division and then district, it's a much larger audience, a bit much larger room than your right. typical club meeting. And to that point, it also gives you an opportunity to get much more what? Practice, practice. Experience. Practice, 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 stage time, but also feedback. You get a lot more feedback. Sid can tell you this when he studied at club, went to area division, onto the district. Did you get a lot of feedback, Sid? Yes. And he's did. still craving that feedback is an international speech contest. It's also an opportunity for all of you when you conduct a club contest, that's where it starts. It's an opportunity for what? Membership building, which is why we invited you all here tonight. Not just to listen to the presentation, but you could be potential members for Toastmasters on purpose. We are See. accepting applications. It's something that I, that I can't overemphasize. Okay. It's the relationships that are developed between the area directors and the, and the divisions because they, they rely on each other to put on the context, but those relationships are la relationships that last for a really long time <coughs> and, and, and they're really strong. And you know, each of the area directors in a division, you know, they each have to help each other for all of them to, to, Absolutely. to do well. You know, we all are aware, I think, that none of us do this alone. And certainly when it comes to contest, you cannot do it alone. There's a lot of moving parts to the club, and then you get to the area, and you get to the division. Of course, the district, it just keeps escalating each level we go through. So let's move on. So district officers, it's also an opportunity for district officers to learn more about contest. And for them to participate beyond the club, again, collaboration, participation. So Bilal and Jaya work in conjunction with our division director who is Sean Siegel. He in turn working with the club growth director or working with the program quality director or working with the district director. It really is a team effort. 
because it does take a team to conduct plan quality contests. Organizers, for those of you who are contest chairs have raised your hand before, it's an opportunity for you to practice your organizational skills because you have to recruit a team of people to help out and we'll get into specific roles for who those folks are. Tim? You're forgetting the best benefit of all. Practice at a speech contest directly translates into additional work and leadership skills. You can make a mistake here in Toastmasters and not make it on the outside. And let me qualify that. When Tim said about making mistakes, that's, that's a good way to put it because we hear a lot in Toastmasters about Toastmasters come, people come to Toastmasters to fail. Did you pay your dues to come to Toastmasters to fail? Yes. No. 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 You came to learn and grow, correct? Correct. Because the only way that we could not be successful in Toastmasters, literally, if we never get up, if Kim never gets up out of that chair, she never lets her voice be heard, then that's the only way she cannot be successful in Toastmasters. You have an opportunity to take risk. Yes. To go beyond your comfort zone. And lastly, it's also for those of you who are public relations officers in your respective clubs, an opportunity for you to promote your club. Give the publicity out there. Give people a reason to come and visit your club. When you have a dynamic, exhilarating, exciting club contest, that's pretty cool, I think. Now, Tim and I might be the exception. I know there's some other Toastaholics in, in, in the room. But the contest, I love the contest. Yes. And just quickly, and, and we have some district champions in the room here. I started my, I participated in my first contest when I was six weeks in the Toastmaster. <laughs> and Bob Roman and I, you know, were some of the original members of Mount Prospect. And Dick Storer, as some of you have heard the story before, who's a 57 year season Toastmaster, he's the one who convinced me to participate in a humorous speech contest. I had no idea at that time what that was. But he kind of, you know, gently twisted my arm and six weeks I got into it. So let's move on. The role of area division directors, they play an important part because they can help you with contest planning, they can help you with contest rules, and also to assist where you have maybe some folks you don't have enough people, they can help find you folks to fill in for your club contest. Some of you ever had that happen before where you have to reach outside of your club, right? You've got to recruit other people for either your target speaker or you need judges or you just need helpers in general. You also act, they act as a resource for your club contest. And however, the area director should not serve as your contest chair. You should have someone within your own club be the contest chair. They can help you with the functionary roles, but as far as the contest chair goes, the word emphasis not having an area director, division director be your contest chair. The other thing that happens, Steve mentioned it, in terms of teams because they've got a little bit more experience because they've been in the club, now they're responsible for a group of clubs. They can bring that experience, that knowledge to your club to help you. The same thing at the area, the same thing at the division level. So let's talk about the key roles. And then we're gonna look at some video here. So let's talk about the key players. So these are your key roles. And I'm gonna go through this. If you have questions, please stop me. If you have additional questions, please jot them down and pad them. Ten, and then later we'll, we'll address them. So your key roles are your contest chair. Those of you who've been a contest chair, you're responsible for pulling all the forms, everything together, so that you're not putting it together at the last minute. And I would suggest to you when we get into planning, talk about the planning phase of it, how many of you have already had your club contest? You're going to have your club contest the next meeting this month? The majority of you? Okay, so good. We've, we've got you in time. So getting your contest chair, if you haven't already decided who that person is, now would be a good time to find out who that contest chair is. And I'll get into some of the things that the contest chair needs to put together for that. Then you have your chief judge. The chief judge, whoever that person is, is responsible for helping you to find your judges. Now this is a rule of thumb. I'll cover judging a little bit later on is in a club contest, Bob, let them know, how many judges ideally should we have in a club contest? Four or five judges. Right. Yes. And the caveat to that, the caveat to that, is if that's practical. Sometimes 
it's not practical. But ideally, you'd like to have at least four to five judges. And your chief judge is going to be the one that's going to appoint, he's going to find someone to be the tie-breaking judge. The chief judge cannot be the tie-breaking judge. Is everybody clear on that? Okay. Because we'll talk about contest rules. And then you have your judges. Now would be a good time to start recruiting your judges. My suggestion would be, just like we're talking about it for Toastmasters on purpose, is have members within your club, and then if possible and practical, have your area director, some other people outside of your club, bring them into the mix to balance it out. I'd also like to emphasize, too, that District 30 runs classes for <laughs> judges training. It is a good idea that they go through it to go through the basics of the judging form and the basics of just how to be a good speech contest judge. That way you'll get a lot more unbiased results. All right. And as Tim said, then we'll, we'll cover briefly the judging part of the document. And then your Toastmaster. Now this part of it's near and dear to my heart. The contest chair and the contest Toastmaster, in my mind, are two different roles. Do most of you agree with that? Yes? Okay. Because a contest Toastmaster, especially once we get beyond the club, they can really make or break an area contest or a division contest. Because your contest Toastmaster, they've got to bring it. They've got to be ready to play when they step on that stage. And there's a lot of elements and components that go into that, but they bring their energy to it. And just like Roger, when we've done the Northwest Division contest, we've partnered up, we've collaborated, and we bring a lot of different elements into it because, again, the spotlight is on whom? The contestants. The contestants. It's not about us. Even if you're the contest Toastmaster, you're not there to do stand-up comedy. You're not there to do shtick. You're not there to really entertain people. It's to put the spotlight on the contestants. And when we put the emphasis on that, we make it about them, then the audience, they have a good time. You can incorporate music into it, you can incorporate video into it, of course. Food and refreshments are always welcome. People always love that, so you want to have a nice spread. But your contest Toastmaster, be selective. When we get beyond the club, I would suggest to belong to Jaya that they have an experienced Toastmaster be the contest Toastmaster. Because it can be a training ground for someone that's coming up, but at the area and the division level, it should see be someone who's a very experienced Toastmaster. And I'm sure I know some of you have gone to contests. We'll show you examples later on, some video, of exactly how not to be right. a contest Toastmaster. Okay. So now, for some of these roles here, the person who in any of these roles should be in the club before the area, the area before division, and the division before the district. Because as it gets more competitive as you go up through the different levels, you also need a different level of folks at each one of those levels. You can still recruit some of the same people for Bilal and for Jaya, same thing for the division director. But as you move up, you want to get a little bit more experienced Toastmasters to fill some of those roles. I wouldn't ask one of our newest members to be a judge in an area contest or a division contest. Because in the old days, Bob remembers and Val remembers some of us who've been around for a while in Virginia, is that we used to grab judges right as they're walking into the contest. <laughs> Not a good plan. Okay, what's needed for a high quality speech contest? First of all, planning. Plan ahead. So for those of you who haven't done your speech contest yet, so let's say they're two weeks in advance, you've got two weeks to properly plan and prepare for it and start the people that are going to help you, start determining what roles they're going to fill and help them to fill those roles, in essence to train them in those roles. And there's plenty of resources and information in terms of contest kits, how to do that, which we'll, we'll share with you. Well planned and promoted. If you just start promoting your contest the night before, you're not going to get a lot of traction out of it. You have a public relations person in your club, start promoting it in your club internally and also externally. The rules. Did every one of you, or if you're familiar with the contest rule book, 2017, I'll talk about changes to it in just a moment. But all, when you, when those of you who are officers, your officers should have received in the leadership handbook along with 
2017 contest rulebook. Please read this. Please read this. Yes, Richard. When does that come out? It came out with the leadership handbooks that were right. distributed to the officers. But I'm going to give everybody your resources so you can go online. Right. Everything we're going to talk about right. tonight, it's all via digital downloads. Mm -hmm. And we'll give you the links. In fact, Roger's going to put it on a uh, top website. Right. So everything we discuss tonight, you'll be able to go on top. He'll put it in a Dropbox. You'll have access to all that information. Fair enough? Okay. Top. But That's please cool. take the time, I can't emphasize enough, please take the time to read the contest rule book. It's very important that you thoroughly understand the rules. Okay, that's top.toastmastersclubs.org. Okay, what are the elements of speech contest? So district direction, we talked about the key roles in it and then having the judges trained as we get up to some of the higher levels. Even at the club level, you want to have quality judging. Because whoever your chief judge is, and when it comes to the briefing part of it, if I'm the chief judge and I'm briefing Michelle and then other folks are helping out with it, oh, Michelle, you've done judging before, haven't you? You know what to look for. That's not being a good chief judge. That's not going through a proper briefing. You need to go through with the judges exactly what's expected of them because it's important to, like an example, imagine Sid, if they didn't do that, if, if where the chief judge was, didn't really brief people, and he's competing in an international speech contest, and not understanding that they're going to go by the criteria when we get into the judging form, very important piece, so be careful about who your chief judge is. <coughs> the area division governors, again, they can help you with your contest and they can provide additional mentoring and assistance in your contest. These are all the different elements. We're not going to cover each one line by line by line, but these are all the different elements of a contest. There's a lot of elements, aren't there? Yeah. Remember when I said there's a lot of moving pieces? Now, not all of them necessarily apply at the club level, but if you go to area, you go to division and beyond, most of them are going to apply in some form or another. You get a chance to practice all these different things. Because even from the opening bell, when Tim is going to show you a video in a little bit, okay. how we start the contest, that's really important. Because in the case, let's say Bob Roman, Bob belongs to Mount Prospect Toastmasters. They're going to have their club contest on the 15th of August. Well, he already, he's already started reaching out and saying, okay, who's going to be my target, who's going to be their target speaker for the evaluation contest? If you haven't identified your target speaker yet, now would be a good time to do that. Yes, Hazel? Since people belong to more than one Toastmasters club, can somebody um, be in the contest as a contestant for more than one club? Yes, in the club level they can, but once you get beyond the club, you have to choose the area that you're going to compete in. You can't cross over areas. I run into that every year, and I think it's a terrible rule. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me. Yes, Bob? How about districts? You can't cross over districts either. Some of us belong in multiple districts, and I don't like that rule either. <laughs> but that's Toastmasters International rules. Yes, Kate? Just for clarification. Adding on to Hazel's question, so if someone's going to compete in two different uh, clubs, do they use the same speech? They Has can. To, they can. That's up to the discretion of the contestant. In the case of international speech contests, Sid, would you recommend that? No. Okay. No, because all the time it's sometimes international. Like Pres Vasilev, who won in 2013, he worked on an international speech for two years. He didn't just come up with that speech overnight, because originally when he didn't win at district, he, he revised, refined that speech, and he came back two years later, became the world champion of public speaking. But that's, again, entirely up to the discretion of the contestant. So anyway, so just to sum this up, so these are all the different elements. You'll get, you'll get, you'll get, you'll get a copy of the PowerPoint slide, so don't worry about writing all this down. So there's a lot of different things. One of the things that I want to, I want to point out, though, to you all, is this one right here, a little bit later on. You see this part here? Contestant interviews and certificates of participation. By a show of hands, how many of you have been to a contest where toward the end, after you do the interviews, 
and they present the certificates, they do a really outstanding job with that? Okay. Yes or no? Yes. Men's a men's a, right, Sue? It's kind of a mixed bag. And by if, I, if, if Kim is competing and I'm interviewing her and then at the very end, and she comes up after we're all said and done, we go through the contestant bio and all that, here, Michelle, here's a certificate for you. Do you think that's a proper presentation, a way to make it symbolic and meaningful to the contestant? Not at all. We'll get to that then. Okay. So let's talk about the five different types of speeches very quickly. Hello, Carol. All right. I know, we are. So the five, the five different types of speeches, the two that we're just going to focus on right now, we're in the humorous and the evaluation contest. In the spring, which that's when Sid competed, international speech contest, and the tabletop is contest. Depending on the district, they vary it. It might be evaluation and another contest, international, like District 54, which I belong to, they do tall tales. But they switch off, they alternate every other year. We haven't done tall tales in 30 and a lot of years, right, Val? Long time ago. But those are the five different types of contests. Now, it's all going to change because, first of all, for those of you that are competing in your club contest, this is the last fall contest. There will be no more fall conferences after November. That's it. And that's for all districts worldwide. So those of you who are going to compete, this is your last opportunity to compete in a fall contest. The district, according to Toastmasters International, we're only required and mandated to hold one contest. And that's the International Speech Contest. The other three contests, or actually four, are optional for the districts. Everybody clear on that? Okay, let's move on. Okay, planning guides. There's a thing for those of you, I don't have it in front of me. I take that back, I do. I have copies for you. This is the Bible, meaning the contest script. I've heard all kind of variations on the contest script. People have gone off the script, and some people, you'll see in one of the videos, Tim is going to show you. Once we get shown. This person was literally reading line for line for line. Your contest Toastmaster, if they practice beforehand, they should not be reading line by line by line. That's going to make it really boring for you know, the audience and certainly probably make it boring for the contestants. So I've got copies of, you have copies of that. Contest forms. Virginia was so nice because you can see these are all the different forms as a contest chair you're going to need. We're not going to go into depth on these, but if you want to see examples, see me in between the break or before you leave. And then again, these are all downloadable. Your contest chair will be responsible for this, and most likely it'll probably be your vice president of education. That's one of the responsibilities for it. And Paul Closell, he's my vice president of education for Palatine Toastmasters. That falls under his watch to make sure that he gets all the forms and stuff. The agendas, you can create a club agenda, a special contest agenda. It doesn't have to be a regular format. Put a little pizzazz, a little creativity in it, have some fun with it. It doesn't have to be the same TI format that we use for most of the time. We already, we already defined all the key roles. We don't need to go into that. D30 website. D30 website, we've got about a 30% open rate for those of you who've never gone on there. The new administration has done a good job at least of putting a lot of the information on there now because we basically went a year where a lot of information wasn't there. So you can look at the club calendar. They've got information in terms of resources. If you do go to d30toastmasters.org, everything in terms of your forms, your contest script, etc., are all on the D30 website under the tab where it said contest. And you have a drop down menu and you can access all of that. Calendar, it's up there. The meeting scripts, we already talked about that. Chief Judge, contest scare. Use the scripts. Please have your contest Toastmaster adhere to the scripts. They can embellish and enhance them, but pretty much follow the script. All the free downloads, again, you'll get, we've got your email address, so we will send that to all of you. Contest forms. You want to make sure these are all the different forms to bring to the contest because Tim's going to show you a video about the lack of organization when it comes to making sure that you have all your forms and you won't have to be scrambling at the last minute to find them. 
because Steve, he and I have been at different contests where sometimes when areas combine their contests and people are scrambling back and forth, oh, do you have this form? Do you have the contestant profile? Do you have the bio form? Do you have the certificate of eligibility? And you also need the judge's certificate of eligibility. Remember to include that. So your chief judge needs to make sure your judges have that one as well. So these are the different forms to bring. Contest agenda, I talked about that. You can again put some creativity into it. Division contest, same thing for the area directors and for the division directors. Here's what not to include very quickly. No judges' names on your agenda. That's a no-no. You don't want to involve them. No educational level of your contestants. You'll find that part out when it comes to the contestant interview. Also, you're not going to get into the club and that they represent. Again, you'll find that out during the contestant interviews. And when it comes to the target speaker, test speaker, pattern speaker, people call it different things. Again, you don't divulge any of that information. You're only going to give the target speaker's name, the title of her speech, title of her speech, and her name. That's it. Okay. Club visits, flyers, all this stuff encourage members to become contestants. I have a pass out sheet for you. You can pick this up. This is six reasons why your members should be a contestant in a speech contest. Contest flyers, I'm sorry, rules, I have another already question. talked about the rule book. Jim, let's show them at this point, let's show them some video All right. of kind of the good, the Can bad. I ask the yes, first question? Good. You've got people have to be in all these different roles, judges, yes. so on. Can they also be a contestant? Um, it depends at the club. If you're in a role at a speech contest, you're not a contestant. You're the contestant or you're an auxiliary role. If you're a judge, you cannot be a contestant. Right. 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 Your contest chair, you cannot be a contestant. Okay. Timer. Timer. You need either one of auxiliary role or a contestant. I mean, for different areas and positions. If, if you're in, in different areas and different contests, like say you're judging a contest in area A and you're a contestant in area C, it's not a good idea. But you technically, I think, can do it. Let's show All right, let's show Roger. Video. Clip one, please. <laughs> A little louder, please, Roger. Of course, we have to have the official postmaster certification. <laughs> For speech, you did the Terry's first kick button. The mere epitome of Toastmasters. Brief remarks with a little bit of humor. During the break, please silence them now. Watch how Jerry kind of probably takes it through a high art form. And Kickball will confiscate your cell phone and use it at the fall conference. This next, okay. Does everybody have those? I need to repeat them for anyone. Say good Toastmasters get right to business. Now with the humor speech contest. There will be one minute of silence between the first contestant and between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please advise me when the green light, one minute is up. And after the contest, all the contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to mark their ballots. We will now begin the humorous speech contest. Look at applause. This next one's a... That was a disclaimer I had in my video. So I'm doing what we call the stretch, so everyone has time to get to This is a Toastmaster who goes off script. She's got the humor in there, but it's way off point. According to the script, please see it for the next contest. We will now conduct the international speech contest. If you used your cell phone during the break, please ensure that it is on silent and alarm, or better yet, turn it off. See, this is exactly the way the script says it. I think my way was much nicer. You know that you had to go out and communicate to the mothership, so. Although humorous, it's not a good part of the contest. You 
don't want your dignitaries up there with an open clock. ETM means distinguished Toastmaster, not don't time me. see just a couple of examples of what can happen when Toastmasters go off script or get a little bit artsy or whatever. There was another contest downtown where they decided to do the contestant interviews, Johnny Carson style. They had each contestant come up, sit down and did a little bit of an interview. It took about an hour and 20 minutes for five speakers. So, you know, I'm not saying don't be art, artsy, don't be craftsy, but you all know how to run a good Toastmasters meeting. The one thing that most division directors get a little concerned about is they violate the basic rules. They don't do the same things that are expected at the meetings in a lot of cases. So if you've got an experienced Toastmaster who's good on time, who's good on managing time, and somebody who keeps the emphasis on the contestants, on the awards. I'll show you what can happen when you're disorganized. Okay, second clip, Roger. Oh, I call this irrational exuberance. exuberance, something like that, could be very useful to get the crowd back going up afterwards. The next clip, Roger. This one is a, is a similar one. To organize your life, my name is Eric Finding, I'll be the facilitator for today. Again, if anyone needs writing utensil, please raise your hand or paper. Keep them raised. And we'll go ahead and uh, make sure you get something. First, I want to go out and I want to start by introducing Jim. He's going to, again, talk about organizing life. drills and forms and stuff so he can keep going. Okay, Roger. <laughs> now we've got to do a little bit of self-deprecating humor here. Why don't you run hey, that I'm Kathy clip. Roberts. I am the tidy tutor and I help people get organized. But really what I do is I help people realize their dreams in life. Let's face it, yeah. it really is about having a house we, that's clean. We, we got an extra, Granted, we all want we that, yes, but, but it really is yes. about making things happen for your life. See, sometimes YouTube pops in those yeah. videos like that that you don't like. Now let's try it again, Mr. Roger. <laughs> Never a technical pro always a technical problem. A good guy knows how to deal with them right away. As you can see, and you don't panic. We only had a little bit of a mix-up. But now if we can get this video mm -hmm. running, what the heck happened now? <laughs> it's buffering. Well, you know what? We could actually run this after we. All right, we'll do that. We'll run so this after. Long, so well, after we run this. We'll run this at the end. I think, what are you doing now, Jerry? Going into Q&A, right? Yeah. All right. Um, let's just, uh, let's just, just. Okay, we're, we're almost at time here, and we have a little bit more information to share with you. But I'm going to share the PowerPoint with everybody, because it's the end of the slide. So since we have your email address, you'll have the complete PowerPoint, all the resources, and everything else. Use everybody in this room, especially. <laughs> Especially the members of top, tap into them as resources. Look at your fellow Toastmasters, those who are experienced and have a lot of uh, experience running club contests, area contests. 
Paul. Also, this presentation will be posted at timsvideo.com. And we'll also have it on the front page of the top. Click, um, click on uh, Toastmasters, or no, click on District 30 and top, and you'll find when we get it posted, this presentation and many others on my top. So I have two handouts for you, Kim, to start circulating. It's going to be on the, it'll be on the front page of the club website. Roger's going to pull up uh, timsvideo.com on the sure. web browser here in a minute. Um, and uh, what we'll do is we'll just... Uh, so those are, the two, those are the two handouts that we have for you. The first handout that you're getting is a contest speech uh, checklist to kind of serve as a memory jogger for you. And the second sheet that I'm giving is the six reasons for people in your clubs to participate in contests. And if we wind up short on anything, Whoever doesn't get one, let me know. All right. Oh, this will be on the website. Yeah, now yeah. I'm going to show you where to find all this stuff at. Roger, could you please click on the thing that the department says, District 30. You'll notice right here a drop-down menu. Click on Toastmasters on Purpose. Okay. There's all of our videos from back. Would you go back now, back to the District 30 part on the website? And then just, just stay right there. Go to 2017. Go to Spring Conference. There you're going to find all the material we have for Spring Conference. Go back one and then click on the uh, speech set. Right there, Spring Division Contests. There's everything I filmed from the division. It goes back eight years. This is the most underutilized resource in District 30. Take a look at it. You will find a treasure trove of stuff that you might not like to think. Most of our district champions have made key use of this from their past speech contests. Jerry. The last one, Roger, just click on the Toastmasters National Tab. So when you go to TI, again, under resources, again, you can have, you can download anything and everything. If you have any trouble navigating it, just talk to one of us or, you know, see again somebody within your club that's really savvy with the uh, Toastmaster National website because navigating it sometimes can be a little kind of tricky. You can just search in that box at the top on contests. Pardon me? You just need that search box at the top the contest. Yeah, they can. contest and it takes you right They can back. do that too, yes. Okay. So. Let's conclude with that video from Patricia Fripp and me. You know, let's do that after. Oh, you're still going Let's do that later after the speeches. Oh, after the speeches tonight. Yeah, after the speeches. Tonight. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to wait around and see. So this gives you some tools and some resources to have a really good club quality contest. Again, reach out to other folks that can help you with it. For those of you going to have your contest in the next week or two weeks, it gives you a block of time to start getting all this together. If you need help, please just be open to asking for help. That's one thing that's great about Toastmasters. We love to help one another. So I thought I hope that you found a lot of value, a lot of benefit out of it. If you have questions, please see me and Tim in the break, or see any of the other uh, top uh, members, officers of the club, and we'd be able to we'd be more than happy to answer any additional questions that you have. So Let's, now we're going to go to now we're going to go to break, and then at eight o'clock. So we'll come back at eight o'clock, right, Kim? Eight o'four. I'm sorry, eight o four. Ten minute break. So, so you can fellowship, have some refreshments, have some food. Get a chance to know your fellow Toastmaster, introduce yourself to someone else, and then we'll come back and then we'll start conducting top meeting. Top. Okay, Kim. Let's make Toastmasters great again. <laughs>